Hey guys, it's me here again and today I'm going to review the iPad mini 5. It was released in 2019 and it is still a one of a kind device. There's no competitor for this tablet both price and form factor wise. I have done an unboxing and first impression video which you will find in the description below. So today in this video, I will try to talk about the device in details. The timeline is in the description so feel free to skip to the part you want to watch. I got it for 415 bucks including shipping cost which is a bit more than usual but I had no choice in this pandemic time. The iPad lineup is so vast these days, you can get an iPad of your choice at almost every price point. Like the base iPad which starts at 329 and there are a few second hand deals as well. But the 32 gigs iPad is not for me, it has got a non laminated display plus I don't prefer the size for gaming. Before buying I was confused about the design as it has got the same design as the iPad mini 4 and it looks outdated to be honest. But while using uh, especially gaming, I found the extra bezels really useful. I had a lot of space to rest my hand. It's only 300 gram and the weight distribution is uniform across all the sides. The front has a touch ID and a 7 megapixel camera. There's two bottom firing speakers and a lightning port. There's also a 3.5mm port at the top corner and the power button is at the top right. The right side has got the volume rockers at the top and there's nothing at the left side. I will suggest you guys to get the space grey variant as it has a black front which looks better because it hides the bezels. The back has a 8 megapixel camera which I will talk about later in the video. The display is a 7.9 inch IPS LCD panel with 324 ppi pixel density. Its resolution is 1536 by 2048 with a 4 is to 3 aspect ratio. The max brightness is 500 nits and using it on direct sunlight is possible as well. It also has true tone and P3 white color gamut. See, it's not a bad display by any means, but I'm used to Samsung Super AMOLED display, so the blacks on this display look a bit grayish on my eyes and the colors are also dull compared to, you know, the Super AMOLED Samsung panels. But for a tablet display, it's a win without any doubt. The speaker is very decent, but nothing crazy like the iPad Pro or the Samsung Tab S7 Plus as this iPad mini 5 doesn't have a stereo speaker system. Let's have a listen to the sound of the speakers by yourself. It has got a 5000 mAh cell and the battery life is amazing. If you don't game on it, it will easily last for 2-3 to three days. But you know, I play a lot of PUBG and my gaming sessions are mostly 2-3 to three hours and I record my gameplay so after doing everything, I always end up having 25-30% to 30 left. The charging takes a long time though and it takes around 3 hours to charge from 0-100. to 100. And it also supports a 18 watt fast charger so if you need to charge it quickly go for it but I'm fine with the 12 watt charger which was in the box I might do a detailed battery test in the future so at this point don't forget to like the video subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update I will appreciate your support I just love the size of this tablet Previously, I have used a similarly sized Nexus 7, so I'm familiar with it. 
it even fits into the pockets of my joggers, but it doesn't really fit into my jeans. But hey, who carries a tablet on their pockets, right? The typing experience is so good because I can type like a phone in portrait mode and splitting the keyboard helps a lot. It might not be the ideal tablet to take notes, but it's always good to have the support. Speaking of which, the iPad mini 5 supports Apple Pencil Generation 1. I didn't get it because I don't really need it now, but maybe in the future I'll get one. I don't want to take notes on my iPad because I prefer taking notes the traditional way. Even though it's small, I never had issues participating online classes. The complex size is both an advantage and disadvantage which is funny. So you just have to know about your preferences before getting an iPad. But I got it both for gaming and online classes so it's a win for me. The selfie camera is decent enough for video calls but the back camera is so bad. There's so much noise in the pictures and there's no 60fps video option but I'm missing a flash so badly. See we don't use our tablets to take photos all the time. The most use case scenario of an iPad camera for me is scanning documents and without a flash it's not clear enough. But I would have bought this device even if there was no back camera. It will get your job done in emergency situations but hey it's not bad to want something from Apple right? Maybe in the iPad mini 6 they will include a flash. Browsing the web is a great experience. I'm using Google Chrome most of the time because I use it across all my devices so it's easier to sync my data. The desktop like browsing in a compact size like this is so good and also because of the aspect ratio it displays a lot of information. I use Apple Safari occasionally and both of these browsers are like my top favorites you know. Media consumption experience is also very good, even though I have a bigger screen, but I always end up watching videos on my iPad. Gaming on this screen is fun as well, and it was never hard on my eyes because of the True Tone feature. So if you get one, don't forget to turn it on. iPad OS can multitask, which iOS can't do, and I'm very happy about it. Even though I'm used to multitasking on my Samsung phone and it makes more sense on a bigger screen so you know I'm just enjoying the whole experience on my iPad. Your life simply becomes easier. This can be a very good option for the students as well as it is very much portable. You know you just don't feel like carrying a big laptop everywhere so having a tablet this powerful and this size makes it very easy for you and it also supports Apple Pencil so note taking is very much possible unfortunately I can I cannot show you that but if you want it will get your job done I use Microsoft Office so making presentations or writing a word document is smooth and a very great experience Uh, A11 even in 2021 is a beast. This iPad never lags no matter what you throw at it. The UI is very smooth and at this point we don't really need to talk about Apple's optimization. Even with 3 gigs of RAM this thing is smooth like a baby's butt. Whereas I cannot think of myself using a 3 gigabyte Android phone. Unfortunately, I couldn't run AIM22 after upgrading to iPad OS 14.6, but my previous score was... Well, I forgot it, so I'll write it for you. Here's have a look at the 3D Mark scores. I play PUBG the most and I never face any kind of thermal throttling or any frame drops while playing. You can also check my channel for PUBG videos because my channel is mostly all about PUBG, so you will get an idea about how smooth the gameplay is. Here's some other games I tested out. Have a look at the gameplays. I played the first two games using a Bluetooth controller.
Chase that carries that must get me astray. Too soon to act on it, can we ever be? That all depends on what you're feeling from me. Show you all the way. Let me show you all the way. If you are up for casual gaming then go for it, as competitive tournaments won't let you play on iPads. It's a very decent choice for students as well who prefer the compact size. It's still worth each penny so if you are planning to get one just go for it. I wanted to get the iPad Air 4 but it didn't seem like worth the extra money for my usage even though it has a 14 chipset but it will still run all the games at 60fps because of the hardware limitations and the iPad Pro is just way too much expensive for me. I want a new iPad mini with a higher refresh display, otherwise it's not gonna be worth the money, at least I think that. It might have a newer design like the iPad Pro, but still if Apple sticks to a 60Hz display, I don't think you will get a huge performance boost from the iPad mini 5. Thank you all for watching, if you have any questions feel free to ask me and please subscribe to my channel for more contents and let me know if I should make more tech videos or not.